I hope you all are doing well today. My name's OCD, and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you my complete VFX workflow to compositing renders from Blender inside of After Effects. In this tutorial, we will be covering a number of concepts and techniques to help you get the most out of your VFX, including setting up your projects and making sure that your color space matches from live action to CGI, how to use OpenEXR passes, as well as how to achieve proper motion blur inside of cycles. The first step in any VFX project is to make sure your Blender file and your After Effects file match. I'm talking frame duration, frame rate, as well as aspect ratio and color space. In After Effects, you can set the color space of all your compositions by navigating to the project settings menu. In here, you'll want to select the color tab that you will then change to 32 bits. You will want to set linearize working space to on and making sure you have your color space matching your footage, whether that be sRGB or Rec. 709. One of the benefits of using OpenEXR multi-layer compositing is the ability to separate out your passes into different layers. This will allow you to adjust your colors as well as your emissions or even your shadows on different layers that all combine into the original image. This gives you the most flexibility and accuracy across your renders, allowing you to better navigate your projects. Continue to click In Blender, you can change the color space of your renders by scrolling down to the Color Management tab, where you will click on the Display Device drop-down, selecting ASUS. For your View Transform, we're going to want sRGB, and for our Sequencer, we're going to want ASUS CG once again. Now, with all of your materials, you are going to have to change their color space. For anything where you need the color information, select Roll Matte. For anything like a height map or a normal map where you just need the data inside, you're going to want to select Roll Data. And for HGRIs, we're going to want Utility Linear sRGB. What the dog doing? To check how many light paths you need, I go into the Render View, where I will select one of my cameras, and then I will click on the drop down nearest the Render View icon. I will change my render pass from Combined to Diffuse Color. This will show me my Diffuse Color. My transmission direct as you can see there is no transmission happening here so i probably don't need any transmission light paths i'll then check my glossy there is some glossy happening so i'm going to want to retain my light paths there so on my max bounces i'm actually going to drop my transmission to zero and then i'm going to drop my max bounce total to around eight the reason why i'm doing this is to make my renders run the most efficient as possible and since i don't need the information why would it be baked into the file to get proper motion blur inside of blender i'm going to check on my motion blur in the render properties panel i will then click on the second preset that looks kind of like an upside down U. You can also turn on your rolling shutter if that is the camera that you're trying to match. In this instance, the footage was being shot with a cinema camera that has a global shutter, so I did not have any on. I lower my shutter by more than half because I find it a bit harsh coming straight out the gate at 0.5. To be able to render in an OpenEXR multi-layer format inside of Blender, we are going to want to navigate to our render settings panel where we can scroll down to our file format. Typically, people use PNG sequences, but here we're going to click on the drop down and click on Open EXR Multilayer. Under Color Depth, I select half, but you may want to select full. I've just rarely found a need where the cost and storage was worth it. Next, we can navigate to our View Layers panel, where we can select the layers we would like to include inside of our Open EXR Multilayer. This varies from project to project, but you will always need your combined, your diffuse color, diffuse direct, and diffuse indirect. You'll learn what your projects require as you become more well-versed with compositing your Blender renders inside of After Effects. And besides that, we're looking good to render, so I'm going to click on Render and Render Animation or Control F12. Import your sequence as you would any other file, but this time making sure to have OpenEXR sequence enabled. Once imported, you will want to right-click on your sequence, clicking Interpret Footage. Here you will change your frame rate to match that of your render, changing your color profile to Rec. 709, and ensuring Interpret as Linear Light is checked on for 32 bit. We will then add the extractor plugin to our sequence that will be renamed to combined. Clicking on the layers drop down, we will select our combined pass. Now, considering we need all of our layers separated, we are going to want to duplicate our sequence quite a few times. Starting with the top layer, I will set it to diffuse color, the layer beneath being diffuse direct, and the one following that being diffuse indirect. 
Repeat these steps for the following layers, but this time for glossy. We will then change the blending mode of our diffuse color and glossy color to multiply, and our indirects and directs to add. Pre-comping our diffuses together, and in a separate pre-comp combining our glossies together, we will change the blending mode of these two pre-comps to add. Next, you can play around with your other passes, such as emission, shadow, ambient occlusion, and mist. I recommend setting your ambient occlusion and shadow to multiply, having the mist set to linear dodge, and being the top layer. Once finished, I will combine all of our layers where we will convert our render from Asus Indirect 709 to best match our footage. To do this, I will add two adjustment layers. On the bottom one, I will add the open color IO effect, which I will navigate to my Asus configuration file, setting my input as Asus CG and my output as Rec 709. For the top layer, I will add my color profile converter effect. I will select Rec 709 for both my input and my output profile, but only on the input will I check linearize output profile. To add color corrections, you are going to want to sandwich a new adjustment layer in between our open color IO and color profile converter effects. Once finished, you're ready to composite as you traditionally would, but this time making the most of your renders, allowing you to adjust lighting and even materials if utilizing UV maps. As compositing completes, you can add to your render queue by clicking Control Alt M, changing your format to QuickTime, your preset to Apple Pro Res 444, and your color depth to 16 bit plus alpha. Feel free to render at maximum depth and quality if you feel so inclined. Asus Color Space is an incredibly powerful tool that I really don't quite understand the science of. <laughs> This is an incredibly powerful workflow to composite your renders from Blender inside of After Effects. If you have any ideas as to how I can improve my workflow, please leave them in the comments down below. I would love to hear your suggestions. And as always, I hope that this video provided some sort of value to you. Feel free to drop a like down below if it did, and subscribe for new videos coming every single Thursday. And until next time, be sure to seize the day and keep learning.